Hey guys, Levelcap here. Today I want to talk about Anthem, Microsoft and BioWare's basically answer to Destiny, the Destiny phenomenon. Who else is going to make these epic scale shooter adventure games? Well, Microsoft and BioWare have put together an incredible gameplay trailer that I would like to show to you guys now. If you want to skip ahead, feel free to do so as we'll be getting into more details later. But if you haven't seen the trailer yet, enjoy. Hi, I'm John Warner, game director for Anthem. Hey! Freelancer. Praxley. Listen, there's trouble. Big trouble. What did you do? <sighs> I made a mistake. I hired some people. They weren't freelancers. I know. They said they could handle it. The price was right. I thought maybe... Unbelievable. You're right. It was stupid. I'm sorry. But they're still out there. Somewhere. If you could just bring them back. Anything you need. I'll get to it tomorrow. All right. In the world of Anthem, you and your friends are freelancers. The heroes who leave the safety of the walls of Fort Tarsus to explore the unknown and protect humanity. Let's join two players as they head out on an expedition. Hey, Paul. You ready to go? I'm just grabbing some supplies. Just about ready. What are you going to use today? I decided to go with the Colossus. I'm going to use my Ranger. Try out some new upgrades. Every player will own an array of exosuits we call javelins. These suits give players superhuman capabilities and are heavily customizable so they look and play how you want. Bam, looking good. Nice, you've got a mortar equipped. Yeah, I got it on the weekend. You lead the way, I'll follow. This is a vast open world you explore with your friends. Each Javelin exosuit has its own unique playstyle. The Ranger is balanced and all purpose, while the Colossus is a tanking powerhouse. All right, let's see what's up here. The world of Anthem is hostile, and threats can come from any direction. It's a dynamic world where the unexpected is around every corner. Uh, I'm not sure we want to use all our supplies on this guy. Yeah, he seems like a problem for another day. We're getting some fire from up ahead. I'll go low. You flank. Hang in there. Almost there. Have you been in there yet? I haven't. We should do that later with Kim. <laughs> yeah, he could use the XP. Hello, treasure. Got some action ahead. Anyone? Anyone? We're under attack. Anyone in the area? We're under attack. I think that's part of Praxley's mission. You 
can equip your Javelin exosuit with gear that brings devastating power to combat. scars down there. Oh, the scars have a heavy. Have time to use that mortar. <laughs> Maybe give me some covering fire. There's a bunch more coming in. Okay, I'll get this round. Good. Oh, yes! Jer's Wrath! Oh, nice. Large-scale world events like Shaper Stories are dynamic and pull you off the beaten path with the promise of new stories to discover. Oh, Shaper Storm incoming. Okay, actually, let's get some more people. Hold on a sec. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, what's happening? I'm right behind you. Whoa. This storm is getting crazy. So what are we supposed to do? Fly into it. All right, let's do this. See you on the other side. Our story is out there. All right, so not only does this game look like it's an answer to Destiny, but let's be honest, it's kind of ripping the game off in certain areas. Being on top of this tall structure, looking down at a world in front of you with interesting banners and flags around you, your city's protected by a wall from the outside environment. There's just a few too many similarities here to Destiny, but you know what? I'll give them a little leeway there because the graphics and the engine looks absolutely insane. I'm not sure how much of this world seems to be pre-planned out, uh, how much of it's on rails, but at the start when you start jetpacking around, it looks like you're going through an avatar style jungle with seemingly unlimited freedom. If that really is the case, that's kind of phenomenal and they could be setting themselves up for the ultimate adventure and exploration game. How the Frostbite engine is able to render environments with this kind of fidelity uh, is just beyond me. I mean, Star Wars Battlefront, the first one looked great. Star Wars Battlefront 2 looks even better. A Battlefield 1 looks phenomenal and now this game seems like it's just taking it to a whole new level. I wonder what kind of frame rate we can really expect with this game because we're incorporating a lot more things than just a multiplayer shooter this time around. There's like AI everywhere, there's underwater caverns, massive, huge environments with, with fish, fish AI. Um, it just looks, it really does look incredible. Stylistically, it feels like the game might just be borrowing a little too much from other genres. Like, I don't know if the game really has a specific feeling to it yet, or maybe the feeling is just a little bit too generic. If I had to criticize what I've seen so far, Destiny without question has a bit more personality to it. Uh, definitely with the sci-fi, with the sci-fantasy angle where this game takes more of a traditional sci-fi angle. The armored suits are kind of typical looking, unfortunately. It's like the game designer said, give me Iron Man meets every generic armored shooter ever. And that's kind of what you look like in this game. It certainly hasn't taken too many artistic risks such as games like Warframe, which give you sort of these biomechanical ninja suits, which look really badass and kind of make sense from a sci-fi perspective. It would have been neat if they incorporated some uh, more interesting technology beyond the realms of just basic armored suit and jump jets. But that being said, within its sort of generic presentation, the graphical fidelity, again, is just so insanely 
over-the-top and mind-boggling that it might make up for the lack of imagination. Now, I didn't really see much in the way of first-person action here. It looks like it's definitely focused around the third-person shooter mechanic. Um, also, there was no mention of competitive multiplayer side to this game, so it could be purely a PvE loop-based co-op shooter. We're not really sure what to expect yet. The detail has been pretty slim so far. We do know that the game is scheduled for a release in fall 2018, so it's not that long a way to wait considering that it's just being revealed now. Also, if you didn't notice there, there's also ground deformation, just like in Battlefield 1, as that guy's massive mortar just created a huge crater in the ground. Now, without question, most of the game seems to be built around a somewhat typical loot-based shooter where you're getting items for killing bad guys, you're getting experience and ranking up, unlocking new items and abilities. It all seems fairly typical from that aspect. If you don't like that genre, then the game might not appeal to you quite as much. But if you do like that genre, which many people do, then this could be the next huge title. Microsoft and BioWare are clearly trying to position the game as the next big huge AAA IP. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I've seen a lot of excitement for this game so far and a lot of people just kind of poo-pooing the genre in general. I would love to hear your opinion. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.